Here's a few questions which are using the skills we've been developing over the last couple of weeks. Okay, so you can see we've gone away from just all right. Here's an angle and here's a ratio. Just give me the number out. We're going in the opposite direction, which is a bit trickier because there's more than one answer. Okay, so for instance, number one. Come here, come in, take a seat. For number one, and they're all in this standard domain here. I'm going to do it this way. Now, um, last time when we were just doing our practice and review, um, my go-to tool of choice was to go to the quadrants, um, all stations to central, and to use that. Okay. Um, this morning, my go-to because I think it's really important that you master both. It's so useful. Is I'm going to go straight to the graph. Okay. So when I draw this guy, do you remember how I did my rough, really fast version of tan? Here's my even faster version of tan. One, two. Three. There you go. So I've got the rough idea. Now where is um where is negative one on this graph? Well, it's going to be below the axis, isn't it? And I draw my horizontal line through. Okay. So I'm expecting a solution here and a solution here. Right. So to know what my result is going to be, I think about okay, tan x equals good morning. Negative one. Negative one. Now remember, um, being that the quadrants is just one way to solve it, and the Graph is another way, right? One of the handy things about the graph is you can actually include this sign and it helps you, right? So if you have your calculator there, uh, if you don't, get it out. Um, if tan x equals negative 1, right? We're used to saying from this, I'm going to reach my calculator and turn this around and use tan inverse, right? With that minus 1 there, okay? Now, if I put in negative 1, okay, which is what I have on the right-hand side, the calculator will helpfully give me an answer, but you just have to be careful with it and see how you can use this answer to find the answer we want. Right? So, when you do tan inverse of negative 1, interestingly, it gives you negative 45. Negative 45? When we were doing sine and cos before, whenever you did sine inverse or cos inverse, it would give you some positive angle, but this one's giving me a negative. Why is it doing that? Um, where is where is negative 45? Hmm. Well, on my diagram, I haven't actually drawn it, right? This is 0 to 360. 0 to 360. Negative 45 would be over here. Negative 45 degrees, okay? And this is an answer. Like, if I put in 10 and negative 45, I'll get negative 1. But it's not an answer in this range that I'm interested in, in this domain, I should say, okay? So if that's an answer, and I know that tan repeats every how often? How many degrees? 180 degrees, right? To get to this answer, I'm just going to have to add 180, right? And to get to the third, or well, the second answer, I'm going to add 180 again. Okay, so all I need to say, using the calculator and using my graph, is I can say from the graph, right? I'm going to have my two answers, which are negative 45 plus 180, 135, okay, or plus 180 again, which is 315, I think, okay. Now, if you wanted to try this out the other way, you do your quadrants, you'd say, okay, I want 10 to be negative, right, negative, so which quadrants am I in? One, two, three, four, which ones do I choose? I choose second and fourth. Right, because you can see everything's positive here, and ten is positive here. So I don't want those. I want the other ones. Right. This is your second second quadrant angle. 135 will be over here, and this is your fourth quadrant angle. 315 will be over here. Really quickly, let's do two sides x equals a half. Okay. So again, let's do a really really quick sketch here. People say, oh, graphing, I don't like using it as a technique because it takes so long. Did anyone count? That was like all like five seconds, okay? Remember, this is different to the question being graph. The question is solve, but I'm using a graph, right? So it doesn't have to be beautiful, it just has to be good enough to solve your question. When I put in a half, I know that this is one, so a half must be kind of, well, half the way up. So I draw my line through. That's why I can see there's a first quadrant angle here and a fourth quadrant angle here. Cos x equals half, that's an exact value. Has anyone learnt it by now? Has anyone memorized it? It's 60 degrees, very good. So I can say 
that's got to be the first one. And the fourth quadrant one is 60 degrees that way. So it must be 300. Bam, I'm done. No quadrants required. Lastly, in review, question three, this is what we were doing last Thursday, so if you missed that lesson, this might raise an eyebrow for you. We're going to use the sign rule, the sign rule in this question, and the result we proved was um, A on sine A equals B on sine B, which is also, if you wanted to, you could have the third sign and the third angle there, okay? We only have two pairs here, so I don't actually need this part of it. Once I have the sign rule down, I'm just filling in. I'm just filling in, right? So here's the one I want. That's what I'm after. So I tend to put that first. So I have to do a minimum amount of rearrangement. I look at the angle that's opposite it. So that's sine 57. And then I line up the other pair. Right? So I've got 44 on sine 31. Okay. From there, what do I need to do to get x on its own? Make x a subject. Yeah, good. Yeah, I'm going to multiply this guy across, right? So I'm going to get into my calculator. I'm going to have 44 sine 57 on sine 31. Has someone already calculated it for me to one decimal place? 71.6. 71.6. Okay. Now, just before we pause and leave this question, does the answer make sense? Does it look about right? Hmm. Um, remember, the whole point of the sine rule is to say if you've got a small angle, there should be a small side. And if there's a bigger angle, there ought to be a bigger side. It checks out. looks perfect to me. And it's not like 7,000 or something that would be ridiculous with the units we're doing. Okay. Perfect.